point of view. <laughs> and I say, hey, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. If you can learn to work and play and get along with each other. You got to listen to your heart, listen to the beat, listen to the rhythm, the rhythm of the street. Open up your eyes, open up your ears, get together and make things better by working together. It's a simple message and it comes from the heart. Oh, believe in yourself, for that's the place to start. Start and I say, hey, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. afraid of something like heights ah! or big spiders ah! but you know who's never afraid sue ellen nothing scares her not oral reports if nobody volunteers to go first i'll have to pick one of you myself i volunteer mr rapper not the daily special at the cafeteria. Yuck! Ah! Not even scary movies! <sighs> and after what happened in the woods, she's still not easy to scare. What about you, Arthur? <laughs> Scared Sue Ellen. And they hear it again. Squeak, squeak, squeak. And man, are they scared. So they start the car and zoom, they drive off. And then? And then, when they get home, they find out what was making that squeaky noise. They're stuck to the car door handle is... Yeah, yeah. A big, sharp... Book. Ah! Wait, I've heard this story before. It's supposed to be a hook stuck to the door, not a book. I know, but where was I supposed to find a hook? That was still scary, Binky. Weren't you scared, Sue Ellen? Why? It's just a silly made-up story. It didn't really happen. We know it's make-believe. We do? That's what makes it fun. Fun is traveling, sightseeing, going new places. Real things are fun. Boom! Ah! Wow, is she tough. School today, Sue Ellen? Yeah, lots of fun. This is silly. There are no such things as monsters. Not here. <laughs> Maybe it's something that followed us from someplace else. Someplace overseas. Like the Baba Yaga. Ogre lady from the Russian backwoods. There she is. Lunch. I don't like chasing my meals, little man. <laughs> Gotten 
into me. Ah! Ah! <gasps> Binky, don't do that! So you can get spooked. <laughs> hey, we finished the scary scarecrow. Wanna see him? Um, no, we'll be late for school. No, we won't. We'll take the shortcut through the dead woods. No, thanks. Maybe later. No, really. She was scared. Suellen scared? Of what? Uh, a mummy? Nah, mummies are too slow. She could outrun one. Not if the mummy had a mountain bike. Nothing on Earth scares Suellen. So, it's not from Earth. At last, someone's seen a real alien. It's not aliens. It's worse. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, an old lady in a house that walks like a chicken? What's scary about that? Couldn't you just catch it and barbecue it? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! This is real! Why? Because it's one of your stories and not ours? Did you ever see a Baba Yaga when you were in Russia? Has Buster ever seen a space creature? Well, no, but... So does that mean they're not real? It still doesn't prove it was a Baba Yaga. I know. It could have been something else. The creek's always noisy this time of year. It's just water. Or it could have been a kappa. What's a kappa? A hungry river demon from Japan. The only way to defeat it is to make it bow. What kind of demon are you? You got to work on your defense, kid. I'll do better next time. Hey, the next guy might have a sword. Remember what happened to Larry? That's how I'd handle him. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Sue Ellen. We're reliving our old Swiss Alps adventure. Remember how afraid we were before we climbed our first mountain? So, how did you get over your fear? Once we'd prepared and had the proper equipment, we could face our fear head on. I wasn't scared. I mean, hello? Binky, I'm going back. Back? Why? We'll never be able to use the shortcut again if we don't face that thing. We just need to be prepared and have the right equipment. Oh, man. Not. 
Bien. story, Sue Ellen? Yeah. How'd you think of something so cool? Sound can fool you sometimes. Everybody in our class made a sound. One kid may will make a sound and the other kid will not be able to see the sound and so they'll try to guess what the sound is. You get it? Are you playing a drum? No. no. Sometimes things sound different than what they really are. Taking apart those packing materials. No. no. I have to admit that I think it's the garbage can going up and down. Yes. Taking tape out of the thing. Yes. Pulling the cap off the glow stick. Oh. Two knives? No. Is it any kind of silverware? No. Sound is a vibration. Vibration that sends waves to the air. Then it would bounce against your eardrum, and your eardrum would vibrate, and then you would hear a sound. You know, your ears can trick you. Is it sliding a box around? No! Scissors. Yeah. yeah. Sound is very mysterious. And now, back to Arthur! The mummy of the Egyptian ruler was surrounded by his finest treasures. If I was a mummy, I know exactly which of my treasures I'd want. Nah. Ick. Nope. Yes. That's it. Some treasures. I'd have real treasures. All the paper for my Christmas and birthday gifts. My favorite stuffed animals. My acorn collection, my button collection. I had a snowball, but somehow it disappeared. That won't even happen for another 3,448 years. I am now mummy ready. If we walk out quietly, we won't have to ask. Good idea. Clarissa is cracked. <laughs> you have so much cool stuff, Grandma. But my most favorite thing is this. 
You mean Clarissa. I've had her since I was your age. There's your mother. We better get you ready to go. Goodbye, Clarissa. Maybe Clarissa would like a vacation from that musty old cabinet. How would you like to take care of her for a week, D.W.? Oh, thank you, Grandma! I know you'll treat Clarissa like the treasure she is. Now you two have fun. A brief intermission. Is the show over? No intermission. Rapunzel fell out of the castle and broke her neck. This is much more exciting than the version Mom told me. Here I go, disappearing into... No! Oops. DW, what have you been doing to this doll? Didn't Grandma Thora tell you to be careful with her? She told me to treat her like a treasure, and I've been treating her like my best treasure of all. But DW, she's a mess. Yeah, I've played with her a lot. Maybe we should get Grandma a new one. But DW, Clarissa's old. And she won't mind that it broke. Oh, good. No, she's old, old, unique, and very special to Grandma Thora. Here, I'll show you. Now, when Grandma Thora was your age, D.W., the world was a very different place. She must have lived in a really small town. That's right here, in Elwood City. That's Grandma Thora with her brothers. Everyone in our family got stuck with brothers. How sad. Actually, Thora's brothers are part of the reason she ended up getting Clarissa. You see... Mama, may I go across the street and look in the toy store window? Why, of course, Thora, dear. Mom let her go by herself? Things were different then, D.W. How are you doing, Thora? Hello, Mr. Jensen. How are you today, Thora? This way, young Thora. Again? I can't believe we're under the flight route for that Zeppelin. It's getting so a person can't have any peace and quiet. is beautiful, much nicer than mine. Hmm. Thora, you said you wanted a horse-drawn carriage, so here it is. This is an airplane. Right. See, Victoria's actually a spy sent to destroy Guinevere's castle. Ah! Is something wrong, honey? I hate playing with my brother's hand-me-downs. Why can't I have my own toys? Maybe when you're older. Toys are expensive, Thora, and girls your age aren't very careful. Oh, I'd be very careful, Mother. Thora! 
Sora, I made you a fairy godmother doll. I'm not playing with a potato. Gee, I think it's a good idea. Hmm. <gasps> Happy birthday, Sora! And now that you're one year older, Doll Hospital. Gone on vacation. See you in a month. Bill. What kind of a doctor goes on vacation when there are dolls in trouble? Good news. I searched the internet and found another place that fixes old dolls. I emailed them. We're saved! And there's a six-month wait. Grandma Thora called. She's dropping a travel column off with Bitsy Baxter and thought she'd stop by for dinner. But we can't get Clarissa fixed by tonight. Now Grandma Thora will find out what a bad granddaughter I am. She'll probably fire me. Look! I tied this ribbon around Clarissa's head, like a headband. Maybe Grandma won't notice. If only there was someone who could fix my doll. Come on! Rapunzel, you sure are accident prone. Mr. Ratburn! What's the rush, Arthur? You know, your geography report isn't due until Thursday. I was wondering if uh, maybe you uh, uh, could, uh, um... Please save this doll! Oh, dear. It looks like she had quite an accident. Can you help her? Hmm. This material really isn't too different than what I use on some of my puppets. Yes, I think I can. Let me take her to my workshop. Come by in a couple of hours. Oh, thank you, thank you. Gee, I don't think you're scary at all. Huh? Let's go, D.W. Hurry, you only have two hours. It's been two hours, hurry. I was just working on a new desk. Note the six compartment separator for graded papers. And here is your doll. Wow! What do you think, D.W.? She's perfect. Here she is, Grandma. Why, she almost looks prettier than when I lent her to you. You took good care of her. Arthur, you were going to let me read that A-plus report of yours. I confess, I wrote Clarissa, and Arthur's teacher was really nice, and not scary like Arthur says. Fixed her, but it's wrong to lie, so I'm telling you, even though you'll never trust me again, and... That's all. I'm done. D.W., Clarissa's broken many times over the years, and I've had her fixed, just like you did. Really? Your getting her repaired shows that not only are you trustworthy, you're very responsible. Well, yes, that's exactly right. And that's exactly the kind of girl Clarissa needs to take care of her, all the time.
and I say, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. If you can learn to work and play, and get along with each other. You got to listen to your heart, listen to the beat, listen to the rhythm, the rhythm on the street. It's a simple. 